Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing good. I want to say thank you for everyone who donated hats and mittens. Those were homemade and were bought in a resource center for Frankfurt Centralia Schools. Appreciated it so much. Um, had a great conversation, and uh, you all, I think, saw an email with those pictures in it. And, um, she was so excited to get all of those items, and so thank you for that. Just a reminder that on Wednesday, we will have one more Advent service at 7 o'clock online on Facebook Live, and then Thursday is we'll celebrate Christmas Eve at 2 o'clock on Facebook Live, but we need to remember that you don't have to watch it at 2 o'clock. If you want to wait until 7 o'clock or midnight, it's okay. I know growing up, we always went to midnight church or 11 o'clock church, so it was midnight when we came out. Um, from Emmanuel Lutheran, go get, go figure that out. And um, we always did it then. And so if you want to do that, you've got the opportunity. It'll be there. It's not going away. So um, anyway, uh, I hope this week is good for everyone and you continue to uh, relish in the preparation that we are doing. This is the fourth week, and we've got to light all four candles on the Advent wreath this week. It is, it is the love candle is often what we talk about on this fourth candle. Christmas happened because of God's great love for all people. A reading from John. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And at Christmas, God gave us the best gift ever. He sent his son Jesus to live, to die, to rise again, so that we could live with him forever in heaven. Although this gift required great sacrifice, God knew we needed Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for our faith, that our faith may be renewed once again. And may we relive the wonder of your love in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And it is about renewing this, the wonder and the excitement that goes with it each year. In fact, it, it came to my attention that what you all can't have it noticed, maybe, is by my tradition in growing up, baby Jesus is not in the stable. And baby Jesus hasn't been in the stable yet and won't be until Christmas. You may have noticed that uh, there's a wise man sitting up on the altar. Because the wise men actually don't come until the epiphany. And so they're still journeying. They started out on the piano and they've made it as far as the altar. And they will eventually get their way to that major scene. That's the tr tradition I grew up in. And so if, if anyone looked, they'd see that the baby's not there yet. No, well, he's not. He will be soon. So let us begin in, um, our worship with our confession. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As Paul, in our day, served in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will hymn, sing hymn number 315, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Yes, yes. 
afraid him, the wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his toes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea, and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And now we'll turn into uh, second lesson of it's in Romans 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that has kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And through the prophetic readings, prophetic readings, writings, is made known to all Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Married, but did not live together for about a year. For about a year. 
year, the woman would still stay in her parents' home, and the home that her and her husband would go to was being built. So even though it was a legal marriage, it had not been consummated yet. It was not consummated with the sexual acts that normally happen after a wedding. Let's be real. But what it is is that God used this servant who was pure, and both her and Joseph were pure in their standing, in who they were as God's people, in who they were as the children of God and understood they had a bigger role to play. They didn't know it when it all started. But that betrothal is important for us to remember in this story that she was still pure. Joseph was still pure as well. It is a story, though, of ironies in some ways, because here we have Elizabeth, who has been told she was barren and is of great age, and probably in that 80, 90 kind of age range, where we say there is no way we're having any more babies. And can you hear God laughing? Can you hear the humor in that of God saying, well, I kind of got you a... <laughs> Uh, this is ironies in both sides. We have the very virgin of one and the very senior of another, and yet both, both, God creates and gives life to both ends of the spectrum, to both sides of the coin. This is really a story of ironies, I think, in many ways. Mary would have only been 12 or 13 when she was betrothed to Joseph as well. She was a young girl, still learning culturally what she was to do in life. Elizabeth, on the other hand, was a very seasoned woman who would have known the culture and the story and how she was to react and act in the community. Can you imagine a 12 or 13 year old trying to now figure this out. And yet that's exactly what God's going to do. He's going to send the aged here to now become the mother of a forerunner and six months behind the birth of Jesus. Mary is perplexed. She can't even begin to understand what this is going to mean for her. She has no idea what she's in for at this point. She only knows one thing, and that is that the servant, her servanthood has been called. Her name has run out, and she is to answer, and she does. Probably as eagerly as maybe Elizabeth, I can't even imagine. At Elizabeth's age, what she had to have said, it, I don't think it was probably, great, I'm so excited, I get to have a baby now. And now Mary, humble as she is, gets to say, I am the servant of the king. Maybe the lesson is for each of us. As Dennis was reading that first lesson, it hadn't caught my attention about so vividly about the movement of the tent, not in a fixed structure of a temple. It hadn't caught me. It did as you were reading it and as you pointed that out. And that is so what God does. He doesn't plant us in just one space. We have a nice sanctuary. That's not Point, though. The point is about what do we do out there, beyond the walls? What is it and where does our message go? Do we want to only stay so we're so inside the walls we can't look out? Or do we want to get excited with zeal, like we talked about in Sunday school, and energy that we want to say our message is for the world? <clears throat> Communion that we share on Sunday morning is for the world, not just about who can be here in this space. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, keep everything under a rock, lock and key, and 
keep it right here because there's rules. God's message is to go into the world. He watches us. Mary understood that. I am your servant. I will do as you ask. For you and me, it's the same message. It is that we are propelled into the community. I have, I have three words that I think describe maybe what Christmas is all about. One, Mary is favored. You and I are favored. We are the chosen ones who have come into the world to share a story, but not keep it under wrap and key like we want to do. Because we want to make the rules so everything is neat and tidy. If you want to see it neat and tidy, do not ever look at my calendar. My calendar is so chicken scratched on, and I've got white out down, and then I redo it in my markers. I keep putting colors because I've got to know where I'm going at what point in time. And yet, sometimes I just have arrows drawn. Because God doesn't let things just stay put. He doesn't allow that if we are listening to be. But you and I are favored, but we are to be obedient. Obedient to his call. Obedient to do as he has asked you and me to do with the gifts and the talents we have. To be obedient. And my third word is we have to have hope for mankind. Maybe that's what right now you and I have to be able to share is hope in a broken world that says we are in trouble, we are in crisis, that we are struggling to make sense of a disease process, that we don't know how that's going to end. The vaccine is kind of here. Although now they're withdrawing part of it because now we're starting to have some reactions that aren't real good. Many states have withdrawn it because of the reactions that are starting to happen. I don't know. What I do know is that I am the child of a God who says, I am here for you. I am the wonderful counselor, prince of peace, the healer of all, and that is what I have to share to the world. I have to go out, not hope someone comes to me. I have to go to the dirty places of life, maybe. To the places that don't smell good and share a story of love. To share a story of hope. And it's about me being obedient because we are chosen and favored on the day of our baptism. At that bond, we were chosen and favored on that day and sent on a message to tell the world. Well, if I seem excited about the story today, I am. Because I know there is hope in this world. There is hope if you and I will share it. We can't walk around going, oh my gosh, the end of the world is coming and I don't know what I'm going to do and I'm going to, oh my. Instead, I want to be excited about what's happening. I want to be excited for baby Jesus to get in that manger. I want to be excited about the wise men coming out. The wise men were smart. They would have brought diapers and formula and work bids instead of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But instead, they bring the other things, good men that they are. <laughs> no one asked a woman what she really needed for that baby. But I'm excited to tell the story. Thursday at the pantry, it was gut-wrenching at a couple of points because I've heard the story of what people don't have. I had to hold those people oh, it went against every social standard we're supposed to do right now. But it's okay. Because God's story needed to be 
shared a hope and love. This is a tough season. People are struggling. We don't need to be moped guts. We need to be joy-filled and anticipating the baby and the joy of what Jesus is bringing. My challenge for you in these next few days, and you've only got a few days and Christmas is here, to share that hope with the world, to know that you're favored, to be obedient, and to share hope. See, God, let me read this. God has not abandoned us to the consequences of our own sinfulness. Rather, God has sent us as our deliverer. There is another way, a commonwealth under Jesus' lordship, that is without end. He has not abandoned us. He's come in the midst of the grind and the duck. to be part of the story for you and me. Let us share that story of hope and love with others that they may know your joy in this season, in this time and space, even though it ain't pretty sometimes. Amen. Amen. Let us see, pin number 56. See, y'all thought I was just a little excited. I got a little passionate today, but that's okay. <laughs> 56. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 
Yahweh, Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the prayers of God gathered, with the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God, we do ask for you to be our world to continue to guide leaders to peace, with hearts and ears to hear your story, and your uh, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask for wisdom for our nation, courage and calmness to all who lead. Let them know your will and allow leaders to rise up and tell your story in public places. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray for our community for continued healing to all who suffer from COVID whether it be from illness, job loss, depression. Gather your people. Let them know your story. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we do list up all others who struggle with any illness. For Stan and Larry, Lois, and all who are afflicted with COVID or cancer or any other illness. Give them courage. Give courage to caregivers that they may have strength and patience and open arms to do the caring of their family and friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And today we lift up the family of Larry Reinhardt, who has come home to you. Be with them, that they may know your comfort. But also this day we continue to lift up all of those servants who have come home to you. You have brought many. And God, we do lift up each of those families in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And gracious God, you are an amazing God. Sometimes we do want to just take a big sigh and say, what next? What can I do? What do you ask? And God, this day, we humble ourselves enough in your presence. We come on bended knee to say, here we are. Come. Show me the way you want me to go. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated and you continue to proceed in our offering. So we'll sing the create uh,
as on a day of festival. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and ever living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, for whom you, you will also make all things new in the day when it comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn.
let's pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O oh Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's sing Joy to the World in the 39. Thank you. 